you know, that show, The Mandalorian, spoiler alert, has this thing some people call Baby Yoda, some people call the child. This is a chibi version of it. We're gonna talk about this, and we're gonna talk about this, the polisher. When you turn it on, it creates a, a disco cloud of RGB colors using isopropyl alcohol, which is used to smooth this type of material from Polymaker. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna smooth me a chibi baby Yoda, or a chibi child, or whatever you wanna call it, and I wanna see how smooth it is. I'm gonna print two of these, and we're gonna see how smooth the polisher gets poly smooth material, and then, and then we're gonna hit it with some paint to see if the smoothing process can help mitigate some of the sanding that's usually needed. Let's get to it, right here on. Hey, real quick, before we get into this next awesome episode, there's a few things that I need to tell you about. One, this is the Raze 3D E2, and well, I'm excited to tell you about it. That's coming up real soon, but also we're traveling. And if you wanna see me, Sean, or David, here's where we're gonna be. We are going to be at Malta's first ever Maker Fair, March 27th through March 29th. Right after that, you're gonna see us at the Midwest Rep Rap Festival, April 3rd through April 5th. And then if you find yourself in Southern California and you wanna go see some really cool tech, you're gonna to go to Rapid TCT in Anaheim. And that is going to be April 21st through the 23rd. Beyond that, we may choose to visit the Magic Kingdom after Rapid because I love churros. But enough about that. All the dates and the information is gonna be in the description. And well, I'll let you get right back to this episode. There you are, welcome back. Let's shut this down because we're not having a disco party quite yet. Let's first talk about this. This is the child from The Mandalorian and this was printed on the Ultimaker 2 Plus. The Ultimaker started out printing this pretty well. I used a raft because I used supports being that's two times the size it should be. And then miraculously the supports failed and then didn't fail. It was, it was incredible how they rescued themselves. I loved every bit of it. So here you go. This is Chibi, <laughs> this is fantastic. This is uh, the Chibi Child by Gimme Builds. It's on Colts, and uh, I'll put a link down in the description. But what I really like about this poly smooth material, the transparent kind, or any transparent material for that matter, is that you can see the infill pattern within. And look, it, it's almost like swirly bits. I, I think the Ultimaker did a great job, and I think, hello, I think PolySmooth is a decent material to print with. It's very PLA-esque in how you print with it. Mm -hmm. So here's what we can do. I'm gonna go kick off another one on the printer, and then I'm gonna put this one in the polisher, and we're gonna find out if the polisher can smooth a model enough to mitigate the sanding usually needed to get something smooth. Let's do it. First, I'm gonna press here, and it's gonna begin the process of raising the platform. It's a little slow and it's a little loud, just like me. I've already added the isopropyl alcohol inside, so now we're gonna put this right here. Oh, are the ears too big? Let's find out. <laughs> Maybe. And we are clear. You know, the polisher came out on the channel a while ago and I just, it's been sitting over there collecting dust because I haven't had a chance to use it. I found my poly smooth filament and I thought what better way to, to use it than to test it like this. Uh, a lot of people complain that this slow mechanism is not actually needed for the procedure and they would be right. Uh, it was a design decision by Polymaker and so if they update this machine, feedback to them is the thing that's going to change the functionality of it, I would imagine. Also, uh, I've heard from others who had review units of this. Uh, Matt Stoltz, when he was working for Make Magazine, his failed right after he published the review. And Adam over at Vector 3D, uh, his leaked a bit. Mine doesn't seem to leak and uh, I don't have any isopropyl alcohol fumes escaping. So each one of the little dots up front here uh, represent, I think it's five minutes. So let's do 20 minutes. There we go. So the LEDs kick on and the isopropyl alcohol fumes just uh, envelop the child. Okay, well, uh, I'm gonna head upstairs. I'm gonna hit print 
and then uh, we'll we'll compare. And uh, you watch uh, a little L, uh, a little RGB a little RGB light show. See you in a bit. Uh, so something happened. Look at that. I came down to check on it. Um, there's a red light. There is a red light right there, and it just stopped mid whatever it's called. Those are moving like uh, it's, it's waiting or filtering something out. I don't know what that red light means. Okay, those beeps mean it's done. Beeps are done. So let's see. Let's see if I can... Okay, I can turn it off. I'm just going to start it again. I'm just going to start it again. Uh, I'm going to do two lights. It should be 10 minutes. It has plenty of isopropyl alcohol. I don't know what that red light means, but it happened. And now you know about it. We're in the office. We're about to get the other print. Might be a little surprise. Might not be, but have a look. What? What? Yeah, that is a 2X scale mini Joel uh, on the Ultimaker. Uh, I tweeted about it, I believe. Look at the designs. Look at those designs. They are wonderful. I love it a lot. So the Ultimaker did a really good job. I'm going to use one of these because I printed with a brim to keep it on. Big thanks to Printed Solid for this PEI. Goes over the glass. Two. Don't fall over. Oh, oh no. It's really handy though having that brim because when I put this in the polisher, then it'll give it a little bit more of a base to stand up to. So bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. Uh, truth be told, I have, I have this. And I actually have a little, um, an, another one of those little little baby Yoda child chibi things from Gimme Builds printed out. I just, uh, I just had to do a, a look at that. Look at that. Uh, you know, being transparent filament, it could be that um, it smooths the layer lines and it makes the outside a little bit more transparent, giving way to being able to see more of the infill design. That's a possibility as well. We're just playing around here and experimenting, and this is kind of fun. So I'm excited to try this out. Let's take this down to the garage, and then we can start the mini Joel polishing. This is exciting. Okay, let's do it. I think it's almost done, uh, but here's the, the mini Joel. That's not so many that I brought down. Listen, here's the other, here's the other, the child, right? And just for good measure, I did print another one of these because why not? I also, uh, I had some protopasta copper filament left. Look at that. Let's see. Can you see that? Look at that. That is a copper, copper chibi child that won't get smoothed, but it's just, uh, it's, it's a great model. It's cute. Darn it. So uh, this, this, this chibi and this mini Joel, I'm going to keep non-polished because this one will get the polishing. Okay. I turned it all the way to the left and that reduces the number of blue squares to zero. And it's doing this little pattern. And that means that it's, it's letting all of the isopropyl alcohol that's been atomized and in the, and put into the air, it's getting it to, to come down, to calm down. It's almost like it's calming down. Go figure. It got finished before I moved the other camera, but it made the beeping sounds so I can hit this button and it's going to rise up and we'll see it in just a bit. Well, there it is. Uh, I, let's see. I'll touch it. It's tacky. It's sticky. Uh, it might still be able to be smoothed a bit more. Uh, the top looks okay. The top looks a little smooth just because it's the top and it's where there was a lot of stuff concentrated, but the sides still need it. I'm going to give it another 15 minutes, another 15 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm going to clean this up. So pour a little isopropyl alcohol there, clean off the dust. Ta-da. Don't worry. I'm going to kick this off. And then uh, when we return, it'll be time to put the mini Joel in. Yes. I got the alarm again and I finally, uh, I got a hold of my friends at Polymaker, Oriana and Nicholas. Big shout out. This red light is the nebulizer alarm. It could mean that, uh, let's see, it could be dry. The membrane could be cracked and it could be overheating. And one of the things to consider is that this was one of the first ones ever 
This was uh, old. <laughs> this is very, very old. They've updated the algorithm for error detection within the nebulizer, is what they're saying. And um, apparently, we can we can update this somehow. But in the meantime, I happen to have a spare nebulizer. This is the thing that siphons up the isopropyl alcohol and then makes it into a mist. It's right back here. So if I unplug this, and then I can put this one in. Okay. The new nebulizer is in. Uh, I wonder if I should turn that off first. Oops. Okay, let's turn it back on. Uh, I still got a red light. Let's just see if we can get it going. What do you say? Okay, that's a nebulizer. <laughs> We're gonna make this work, darn it. We're gonna do it. You must unlearn what you have learned. Maybe that nebulizer is dry. Maybe that one is, is, is dry. So, there we go. Okay, we've primed it. Uh, we have plenty of isopropyl alcohol. It's closed, let's see what happens. Nope. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna put the other one back in because I know that it worked and at least it's gonna go for a little bit of time. We need to get a little bit more polish on this and then we need to somehow polish Mini Joel. I'll be right back. A few moments later. I put the old one back in. We've reset the machine. I primed it just a little bit. It's running now. I set it for 15 minutes, which is three squares. I think those are all five minutes. I'm trying to remember. We'll try to get more polish on this. If it happens again, we'll just reset the machine and uh, we'll get then mini Joel polished. I did talk to Polymaker. They're aware of this issue. Uh, they've improved the algorithm, so we're gonna update this at some point in the near future. But for now, I wanna get this done because I wanna test this and so, we carry on with a little bit of elbow grease and patience. <laughs> it looks like, looks like it's done. I've raised it up. Um, with, with this, the way it works, the isopropyl alcohol does exist on the model and it has to evaporate off. And so what I'm gonna do is remove this little plate and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna set it aside. And I've got this new plate. Remember I cleaned that off and there's the mini Joel. Does it fit? Oh, it just barely fits. Now with Mini Joel in place, we'll begin the slow process of lowering him into the area that gets flooded with isopropyl alcohol mist. And we'll probably set it for like a half hour. It's nighttime. It'll go for a bit. Should be good to go. Good luck, Mini Joel. Hey, it looks like the mini Joel is done. Here it is. Uh, here's the, the, the baby Yoda, the child. I'm gonna get this camera going because I, I want you to see up close. So this is what it looks like. You can kind of see there's a, a, a shimmer on it, right? Or a sheen or something. So this one, well, you can see the, the infill pattern through it. I can't really tell how smooth it is though. You can see the infill pattern, but uh, if I touch it, it's just, it's a little tacky, just a little bit, just a little tacky, which is fine because it has to set up and it has to cure and it has to do all that, right? So then here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take, whoa, whoa, okay. Oh, look, I don't know if you can tell. So the brim that I had around there, uh, almost it, it like melted into it. I don't wanna, I'm just gonna let it kind of sit. I, I get the feeling that that one layer thick brim is now a permanent fixture to this. Uh, the feet are definitely clearer than the top of it. So there we go. We've got a smoothed mini Joel. We've got a smoothed baby Yoda or the child. And we've got non-smoothed versions of these. And the goal will be to hit it with some primer and to see if the smooth versions take primer better, if there are uh, less of an appearance of layer lines, if it mitigates sanding, and to see if enough detail is lost in this method to not make it something that works well. Uh, Mini Joel has more detail than this chibi child because it's all just kind of roundness. But uh, I'm really looking forward to this. But I'm gonna let these sit overnight. All right, well, good night. I'm gonna go have some ice cream. I'm gonna catch some Z's, and then in the morning, we'll take a look at this. We'll see what happens. Tomorrow.
It's the next day. Ow, I'm sitting on my phone. I should, probably shouldn't do that. The next day, these are done. They're cured. I can touch these without uh, them being tacky, which is good because as they're curing or drying or whatever we're going to call it, they're tacky. So they're not tacky anymore. Everything's set. And it's interesting. If you look here, there we go. You can see that the brim no longer exists right there. And if I do this to break it away, oh, does it? Oh, look. Oh, look at that. It's just kind of this ooey gooey mess. Wow. Okay. Well, we know that. Oh, and it's sticky, icky, ooey gooey. But uh, that didn't cure. The rest of the jewel did. There's kind of a look. I don't know if you can tell really how smooth it is. You can see the, the internal structure of the infill. That looks really good. Uh, let's see. Let's set this. Let's set this down. And there's the child. And uh, I don't know if you can tell if it's any smoother. It feels like there's a little bit of a texture on these. Well, that came off just fine. Okay, note to self, remove the brim. It does look like, uh, there, it, like I can feel a bit of a texture here. I can feel it. Uh, the top and uh, the top of the feet here on the mini chole, super smooth. Um, not as smooth. There's a bit of a texture to it. So I'm really curious to see how the primer is going to sit on these versus the models that aren't smooth. Let me get set up to safely spray some primer in here and we'll get some results. I'm kind of excited for this. Come on, Mini Joel, let's go. <clears throat> there we go. We've got um, smooth, not smooth, smooth, not smooth. And I mean, I can already tell, I can already tell that the smooth model, let's see, the smooth model, smooth model, smooth model, I can already tell there is less surface imperfections, which means that maybe our test, maybe it's cool, maybe our tests are working. I still wanna let the primer kind of dry a little bit. Uh, we'll give it 15, 20 minutes. It was a bit of a thicker coat than it should have been, but, but uh, I don't know, we'll see in like 15. Eventually. It's been about 15, 20 minutes, and we've had some drawings, some curings, and whatever you're gonna call it, and we have results. But what I wanna do, uh, I'm gonna zoom in with my phone camera and do side-by-side -side comparisons because it looks like the smoothing works for some things. It looks like it, looks like it doesn't work for some things as well. Uh, it looks like there's considerations to take in when smoothing stuff, so let's get to it. Let's first compare these right here. Okay, have a look. These are the Wexter Mini Joels, and the one on the left, the one on the left is smoothed. The one on the right is not. Let's see if I can't turn him just a little bit. One of the first things I notice are the feet. So you can look there and you can see the non-smooth feet do show layer lines through the primer, whereas these feet do not. So the feet were smoothed incredibly well. The body itself, it looks to have less, less layer, uh, less layer lines showing through, I would imagine putting it in the machine for longer could eliminate more of that. Uh, let's see, how are the eyes and the glasses? Eyes and the glasses. It definitely looks like the smoothing helped with the face, but it's not perfect. The hair itself, the hair turned out really well. I think smoothing helps with that. Uh, you can kind of look right there. Also, I noticed that uh, the model itself, the one that's been smoothed is a little shinier. And I don't know if that's because of a consistent surface texture or if that's because of something else, but uh, the, the non-smoothed model looks matte finished, whereas the smooth one looks to be semi-gloss. Let's move over to the child. Here we go, look at that. There's the child. So again, this one was the smoothed one. And I, I'm thinking that's, I don't know what that is. That could be a little spittle from the uh, primer. Uh, this is the non-smoothed one. You can tell that there is still a bit of a texture on the smooth one itself. The top, uh, you can tell that, you can see those layer lines right there. Uh, you can see they're very, very apparent over here. It looks like, looks like the smoothing worked pretty well on this. Again, putting it in for longer would have given better results. 
it does look like the tops of the model, uh, as well as the mini Joel, but it looks like the top of the model uh, gets a better result just because I think the isopropyl alcohol mist can sit up there for a bit. Uh, if we look at the design there, we can see some of the infill poking through. We can see surface texture. Over here, we see similar, but just slightly less. Uh, I also think that maybe pre-sanding would work a little bit better. There you go. Those are my, those are my results. Well, that was a bunch of fun. We discovered some cool things about that machine, the polisher, and it looks like smoothing is good for some things. Smoothing is not good for other things. I think that it can be helpful if someone is creating miniatures or smaller models or, or uh, models that have small details that, that need to be smoothed. Uh, you do run into uh, softening the details because it is a smoothing process. Uh, I, think, I think the smoothed models do look better. I know they're not perfect. Uh, and again, we could put them in the machine for longer. We could also spend time sanding them before we put them in the machine, which might introduce a different surface texture. Again, a lot of experiments that we can run through this. It's kind of, it's kind of cool. Let me know if that's something you would be interested in because I, I find that to be interesting. And if you do as well, then maybe we should make an episode about it. Hey, a big thanks if you made it this far. Don't forget, uh, right after this, we're filming After the Five, available to Patreon and people who support via links in the description and now on Floatplane as well. Uh, so if you made it this far, you are awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. I do love you all. And as always, high five. <laughs>